Yeah, we still haven't done anything with the hands yet. That's okay. We still haven't done anything with lunging yet. We want to teach the lunge separate from the use of the hands. All right. There are, right now, in the theory of fencing, we have found six different types of lunges. The primary difference is not just the execution of the timing of the feet, but primarily the execution of the timing of the hand relative to the execution of the rest of the lunge. So to, it's important to learn to separate the hand from the feet. So when they're first learning to lunge, no arms, just put the hands on the hips. Okay? Yeah, you get them out to their good on guard position. And usually I have them, yeah, great. Right? They have, at this point, hopefully accomplished some basic movement. And then I have them make a little advance, a little retreat, a big retreat, a little advance medium advance, big advance, and then a huge advance, but not move the back foot. And suddenly they learn to make a lunge. Okay. This is the same position, hopefully, that they were in when we were first warming and stretching them out. Important thing to be sure is that this knee is not going over the ankle. This knee should be over the heel. Once this happens, and it's very common to see it, it's a lot more strain on the knee ligaments, the joint, okay? Even if it's a little shorter, don't want them leaning. Again, the basic warm-up that we did, preparatory footwork, gave them a sense of keeping the body straight and the hip under. Then they recover, okay? Again, little advance, big retreat. Medium advance, huge advance on so the back foot. What they will have to practice doing when they lunge, of course, that's going to happen. You want them pushing this knee out and keeping that front toe straight forward. Okay? The athlete will tend, often will tend to make a feeling that they want to rotate the hips. If you introduce it from the concept that you're just at making a really big advance and reaching, you'll get a better lunge. Then you want them to pull that recovery. Not stand up. See, I stood up straight. My back leg is straight. Now I'm going to be toast if I'm competing because I'm not going to be able to eat. But if I'm here, you can see my back knee bending, my back foot lifting. And then I recover my front foot. And I'm immediately sitting down on guard, ready to retreat. Okay? I always teach lunge, recover, retreat. The retreat is the default option. Later on, when they learn to make a good lunge, that lunge may gain some distance. So recover, retreat, really just gets me back to my starting position. Let's look at it again from the side. I'm going to lift my toe. That's important. They start this way. Now they lose the power of the back leg and they're leaning. And they end up lunging like that. Right? Really hard on the knee. Really off balance, right? Lift the toe. And then I straighten. And there's my lunge, all right? As they get more flexible, ideally this goes five parallel to the ground. This is great for the beginner. And I'm immediately sitting down and I make my retreat, okay? If you have problems with athletes, have them doing this, have them lift the front toe. And they have to keep the front toe up while they are advancing and retreating. All right. If they are here and they lunge this way, 
<clears throat> now they end up having to rock the body. The timing of the lunge is incorrect, and the balance is incorrect. The toe is up. Now the execution is correct. And in, the, in another one of the accompanying videos, we have some games and exercises to help practice that toe and kick for the lunge. But still trying to keep the back heel up. It's challenging, but now it really makes them feel that the back leg is what needs to work. Okay. So now hopefully we've got them doing some decent lunges. Then it's time to add the arms. 